Släpper man det där då är... Hi again everyone, back again with another video. I thought I'd just have a look at this situation here quickly, just because it's been a while since I posted anything. So, this goal here... I'll only be looking at the defensive aspect of the play. It is a goal scored by Helsingborg, the team in black or dark blue, against Pixball, the team in white. Right now, Helsingborg have the ball here on a free hit, and they are attacking towards this net here. So it's actually quite a straightforward analysis, this one. Put simply, this white player here, number 79, gets beaten by a two-on-one against them by these two black players over here. And you probably saw that in the clip of the goal as it played through at the start. Now, having a look at the broader situation, the white team actually outnumber the black team here in their own zone. There are five white players against only four black players. However, that is largely irrelevant because the dark team is able to create a two-on-one in here and they exploit that two-on-one to get a favorable shot which ends up in a goal. So the defensive team could essentially have as many players as they want in their own zone. They could have another three or four players standing in various positions. But if the attacking team is able to create an outnumbering situation in a small area and exploit that, then that's all that's required to get a good scoring chance. At this moment here, this player is about to make the pass back to their teammate who ends up scoring the goal. And you can probably see that the crux of the issue for the defensive team is that there is confusion as to who is responsible for this player here. At the moment, he is unmarked and the white team seems to be confused as to whether it is this player's responsibility to mark him or this player's responsibility to mark him. So let's go through both of those options. If the white number 23, this center here, were to mark this player, they would obviously need to be closer. So they would be somewhere really close to this player and between that player and the net, hopefully, they should be able to disrupt any pass or shot as the ball is played into him. If that were the case, that means that this player here would be unmarked and this number 13 would need to come up and mark that player there. So that is the first option. The second option is that this white number 35 marks the eventual goal scorer. Again, they would have to be very close to them, and ideally, they should be between that player and the net. So they would need to come around the front side here to disrupt any shot or pass as the ball is played in. That would mean that this player here, number 23, would stay with this dark player here, and that would leave number 13 free to roam the front of the net and potentially come out this side to help if the ball carrier decided to switch sides and go behind the net. So they are the two most practical and readily available options as to how this situation could be solved or could have been avoided. I would like to know what you think and which option you'd prefer and why. So leave a comment below. I'm interested to hear the different opinions and analyses on this. But my main takeaway, and I think the key point from this analysis, is that it is essentially a lapse in communication. I think that both of those options have their benefits and drawbacks, but they are essentially equal so long as someone ends up marking this player. But for either of those options to be implemented, the white team needs to read what is happening and communicate effectively as to what needs to be done. So 
whether this player or this player announces to their teammates that they are going to mark this player, either of those is fine. So long as someone does it and acts decisively, then the rest of their teammates can adjust. Now, before that can happen, that means the play needs to be read by the defensive team. And it's a bit hard to read those situations as they're evolving so quickly if everyone on the defensive team is looking at the ball carrier. So this could have been avoided by looking at the other players on the court, leave the ball carrier in the capable hands of this white player here, and the other players can have a look at where the other threats are and communicate accordingly. Remember, the white team has the outnumbering situation here on the whole. They are playing five players to the dark team's four here, but it's the lack of communication which gets them punished. If they had communicated effectively, then all the players could have marked up tightly and they would have had a spare player to send in to try and win the ball from the ball carrier. So they could essentially have two players pressuring the ball carrier. However, the lack of communication means that they end up getting scored against even though they had favorable numbers. That's all I have to say on this goal. I just wanted to have a look at the defensive aspect here because it's a clear breakdown in communication. And in order for communication to happen, players need to lift their head, look away from the ball and look at the other opposition players who may be a threat. So leave a comment below. Let me know which option you think would be best here or which one you'd prefer. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Zeppo Maledaudo, L! Yeah.